there's this big debate where Bitcoin wins in inflation. Some people think Bitcoin is going to suffer in a deflationary environment. And that's what I really want to talk about in this video and why I think it's very, very important that we have this conversation and that if you haven't already, I implore you to please subscribe to this channel so YouTube gets a spank in order to put Bitcoin content out in front of people that are currently relying on real estate, on stocks, on all these things to protect themselves in an inflationary environment, not realizing that the true enemy that's approaching is deflation. The CEO of Walmart just came out and said in the next uh, few quarters, we're, the, the enemy, the real enemy that may emerge will be deflation, not inflation. And so this is a, this is a pretty interesting environment and, and topic to talk about because a lot of Bitcoiners think that, or a lot of people that are interested in Bitcoin think that the only thing uh, that Bitcoin will, will win in is in an inflationary environment. And as you've seen, that's not true because we've had a high inflation environment and what's happened to the price of Bitcoin. I'm not talking about Bitcoin as a technology and the adoption curve. What I'm talking about is the price of Bitcoin has actually lost over the last two years, right? So what you want... Uh, and what will happen and what is happening, as we saw today, the Mannheim car price index continues to tumble. I think the uh, secondhand car prices are accounting for something like 20% of the CPI number, which is so important, which is why it's important to know what's happening to secondhand car prices. But what's, what's really going on right now and why Bitcoin will win during an, a deflationary period um, is because... We live in an inflationary system. The system, in order for the system to survive, it needs inflation because you cannot have all of this debt on your system uh, and continue maintaining a deflationary environment. The deflation, if deflation does occur, then what really happens is that the cost of borrowing go, continues to go up because the value of the, the, the paper that you print is not going down fast enough in order for you to refi and print more, which is why Ultimately, we are heading towards a uh, to, towards a low cost of credit environment, and right now we've overshot the 40-year trend line by a significant amount, and we will pay for that. The one caveat is Jerome Powell has, has openly said uh, that he will he's happy to reverse the trend um, on the cost of borrowing very quickly if needed and he's proven that with covid right we've seen all of these things happen uh and yet people are still not understanding this people think that we are headed towards an unlimited amount of inflation and that's going to be a, a big a big issue etc cetera, etc cetera. here's the problem you are not going to get credit loosened in a high inflation environment because there's bigger problems to the system. You need inflation sitting somewhere in a range in order for you to mark down the value of the debt that you've had through the, the value of the dollars. So if you borrow a dollar today and allow that to inflate over the next 10 years, the value of the debt is also going away because the value of that dollar that you have to pay back is now depreciating, right? You still owe you know, a trillion dollars, but the value of a trillion dollars now versus 10 years time, the trillion dollars in 10 years time is worth less than it is today. So therefore you've marked down the debt. That's gonna be the way that we escape this debt system that we have, right? What's gonna happen, I predict, over the next couple decades, this is not like the next five years, I'm not a doom and gloom boomer, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the whole system's gonna collapse next, collapse next year. They've been trying to play that bet for, for a very long time and they keep losing every single time. Here's how I think this happens. Over a short period, over a, over a long period of time, uh, inflation will be allowed to run a little bit hotter than it has, right? Obviously, during this last couple of flu season period, we've had inflation running very hot, and you can't afford that because it makes the middle class suffer uh, and, the, and the lower class suffer. But you need inflation running a little bit higher so that you can mark down the value of the debt faster than you can actually borrow and add more debt to the system. So what, what I think will happen over the next few years, over the next you know, few decades, is that inflation will be allowed to run a little bit hotter once it's controlled, once it's tamed, once it's not going to affect Main Street. Inflation will run a little bit hotter, and then uh, that value will be printed, the extra money that's printed in order to create that inflation will be, will be put into assets, and Bitcoin is the perfect asset to do that with because you don't affect anyone, right? Right now, we've been using houses, but if houses keep going up in value, 
the, the poor people are going to protest at some point, and that's a problem. Because if the poor people start protesting, there's way more poor people than there are rich people, and then there are uh, security in order to keep everyone in line. So you can't afford for the, for the poor people to protest, because that's going to cause the empire that you're protecting to, to collapse. And the problem is, is that if you start threatening the cost of, of, of putting a roof over someone's head, you're going to start seeing protests uh, and anarchy in the streets. And you don't want that. So real estate's a very inefficient asset because rich people are trying to put their, their, their fiat dollars into as much real estate as possible. And now they're driving up you know, prices of, of homes that are not prime. They're not prime real estate. You're talking about average two-bedroom apartments around the world in, in cities going through the roof, you can't even afford to buy it, right? So at some point, that'll cause a lot of problems. Whereas with Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin can go to $10 million a coin and still the average person can use it because there's 100 million. This is what I'm trying to say. There is a lot to Bitcoin being the best inflationary tool asset that a lot of people are not understanding. Well, I keep imploring you to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share the video uh, and help me get this message out there because people that are sitting in real estate thinking they're going to make a bunch of money over the next 20 years, you're not. It's just not going to work out because we've reached the maximum amount of juice that you can squeeze from that cherry. So at this point, Bitcoin is uh, a tool to allow a large amount of money printing and for that money printing to go straight into Bitcoin, allow a little bit of inflation to run a little bit hotter uh, and then lower the debt to GDP ratio and kick the can down the road. The debt to GDP ratio can be fixed in, you know, all the doom and gloom boomers and thousand dollar net worthers think there must be an explosion. The US, United States has to stop working. Everyone's got to go back to shooting people with their guns in order to in order to fix the system. You can kick the can down the road for another hundred years by lowering the debt to GDP ratio, by allowing the inflation to run a little bit hotter uh, for the next few decades, um, even for a very, very short period of time. Right. If you had inflation running at. I don't know, like if you had money printing running at 20% a year for the next three years, you could compound that debt to GDP ratio down quite a bit. So the reason why Bitcoin wins in a deflationary environment is because this system can't handle deflation. It's just as simple as that, right? The system cannot survive on deflation. If that happens, the United States will collapse very quickly. In fact, in the next 12 months, you've got about $8 trillion of debt that needs refinancing by the US government. They're not going to refi at these rates. Those rates will be brought down. And if Jerome Powell does not break them, bring them down, someone will be put in his place to bring them down in order for the United States to refi the debt at a much lower level, which is why rates will come down, which is why the bond trade uh, is now in play, right? Bonds have been doing really bad. Now is the time to buy bonds if you're stupid enough um, and, and or if it must be a part of your portfolio. Now is the time to buy bonds because over the next few years, we're going to see that interest rate come down. In fact, I think it's going to be a lot sooner than the next few years. So really, the reason why Bitcoin wins in a deflationary environment is because the system cannot handle. We don't live in a system equipped for deflation. We live in a in a system equipped, designed, purpose built for inflation. And if you ever have deflation, you are going to cause a systemic collapse like you've never seen before. And no one wants to do that. No one's voting for a politician that wants to shut down the system in order to deal with the inflation that's been dealt with. It's much cleaner, much simpler to allow a little bit more inflation, allow a little bit more money printing, have that all that go into assets. Uh, and now we have Bitcoin, so Bitcoin can be the perfect asset for that. Well, we have all of that go into assets. We lower the debt to GDP ratio. We kick the can down the road. No one needs to know about it. Uh, and that's how that's how I believe this system is going to continue. Right. You may have a resurgence of a new U.S. dollar, but I don't even think you need that. You got U.S. dollar controls 85 percent of world trade. The BRICS countries are not really posing any real threat. They're not building any credit markets around any currency that they're talking about. They keep trading rupees and yuan and, 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 and rubles back with each other and then converting them into U.S. dollars in order to pay for the U.S. dollar debt. This is, you know, this is a U.S. dollar upcoming century. And now that all these countries are, are sort of showing, that, showing their hand and how they can't manage currency, the US dollar is going to be the preeminent currency. And again, the reason why Bitcoin has been faltering over the last two years is because 
in a in a fiat system, in a fiat environment, the U.S. dollar is the safest asset until it disappears. So. We've seen a high inflation environment. The interest rates have been going up. Bitcoin's been going down. Every asset is a risk on asset compared to the U.S. dollar in this system. When and if the U.S. dollar collapses, that is the only time where Bitcoin starts being assessed as a risk off asset. Until then, it is a risk on asset. The only question is, how does it trade against all of the other credit movements that are happening in, in the world? And the world that we're about to see is that we're about to see deflation. We've had our inflationary period. Now we're about to see a deflationary period. And as that deflationary period kicks in, worldwide central banks will absolutely lose it because they lose their power if we enter a deflationary period. And they will turn on the money printers and increase liquidity in the market in order to drive up the inflation again. Inflation is a friend of the debt system. People might think, normal people might think, that inflation is bad, and it is bad for the average person on the street. But remember, inflation is a vector. So if I can create inflation in asset prices without creating inflation in how much it costs to feed someone, the people at the bottom, the ones who are most likely to protest, are never going to notice anything, and the asset prices continue to go up. And you see, and you feel this, this weird boiling the frog mentality. Now, some of you might not like what I'm saying, but this is how it works. Rich people have been doing this forever. Rich people know that I get fiat dollars and I put them into hard assets. Poor people don't know that. And as they're doing that, they're getting boiled like a slow frog. Now, the question is, can anything be done to help them? Right. And here's why I always say rich people need Bitcoin more than poor people. Poor people need Bitcoin adoption more than rich people because it would be really great if some of these poor people could actually start earning in Bitcoin because now their savings is built on Bitcoin and that will actually allow them over time to protect the value that they, that they have. But until then, they're going to need the education of I earn in dollars and I have to convert those dollars. But what happens when I don't have enough dollars to even pay for what I'm doing? You're unhelpable at that point. Which is why I'm focusing my content on the people like my parents who have economic value, who have done the right thing, who have saved up, who have sacrificed, who have put their money into, into real estate and other assets in order to take care of their two sons, only to realize that the system has screwed them over because you can't increase property prices the way that you need to in order to hedge against the amount of pounds, for example, in my parents' situation that has been printed. You just can't do it. Right? You'll have protests in the street. So you have the governments have to control that supply lever on the real estate in order to maintain the prices, in order to keep the populace happy. Right? If it was just prime real estate, right, like Manhattan skyscrapers or beachfront property that was going up, no one would care. The problem right now is, is that the average second two-bedroom apartment is going up. The average family home is going up to a ridiculous amount. So now you have to care, which is why the juice has been squeezed out of that asset and why Bitcoin is emerging as the perfect asset to print money and dump it into uh, to allow that inflation to happen without uh, af affecting the, the quote unquote normal world, right? So this is why Bitcoin will perform well in a deflationary environment. Why? Because the system itself cannot handle deflation. Deflation is the poison pill. There is never, ever going to be deflation. If there is a significant amount of deflation and the central banks, like the central banks will shit themselves so hard, they will print as much money as necessary, set airdrop it into people's bank. In fact, they'll have IRS agents walking around handing out cash to people in order to protect the system against the deflationary threat. The, the system can't handle the repayments at these, at these interest rate levels, and you need the interest rate levels in order to, to tamper down the quote-unquote inflation. So we've had our inflationary period over the last few years. The doom and gloom boomers think that inflation, inflationary period is just going to continue for the next 20 years. And my, my point is this. It's not going to continue. What's, ha what's going to happen is that inflation is going to be hidden in asset prices. Uh, and the normal people will go back to experiencing a inflation that might be slightly higher than what they were used to over the last 10 years, but it's certainly going to be less than what they've experienced over the next two years. And wealthy people are going to get infinitely wealthier in dollars because there's just going to be more money printing going on to balance out the debt to GDP ratio. So Bitcoin wins. If we're in an inflationary environment, until the US dollar is taken out, 
Bitcoin is always a risk on asset. Therefore, it will suffer in an infl in a in the period where there is a response to the inflation. And then as that response to the inflation starts tapering down, which is what we're seeing now, and there is the threat of deflation, Bitcoin will, will, will prosper because of the amount of money being printed. And it is the only hardest, scarcest, uh, most hardest, most scarcest asset humanity has ever created. So we are entering a period where Bitcoin is going to win. Uh, and I think everyone needs to focus on getting to one Bitcoin. Those who can, can obviously get to more, depending on what your net worth is and, and, and how you're working. So I hope that explains what I think is going to happen over the next few decades here. This is not going to be a next year situation. I don't care what any Bitcoin podcaster, any doom and gloom boomer thinks. This is not going to blow up next year like they keep saying every fucking year. Right? This is not going to happen. The United States is not going away. The United States is not going to die tomorrow. The, you know, we're not going to see famine in the streets. When, the, none of that's going to happen. There is a very quiet way to get rid of this problem. And that is, as long as the bread basket doesn't inflate and the normal people can live, we can send them some money to, to live, we can allow the asset prices to go up because that's how we get rid of and we allow a little bit higher inflation and that's how we get rid of or rebalance the debt to GDP ratio and kick the can down the road for uh, another 60 years. That is what we'll have. That is the best political path that will be th that there is and that's the one that will be taken because no politician wants to sign off on let's go through an anarchy period in the United States of America and thus the rest of the world. But despite all of that, there are still only three rules to Bitcoin. Step number one, you buy Bitcoin. Step number two, shut the fuck up. And step number three, you get fabulously wealthy.